So my name is Irene Juarez O'Connell and I am originally from the San Fernando Valley. That's just north of Los Angeles. Um, I've been living in Santa Cruz County now for about 12 years. Uh, I went to school at UC Santa Cruz. My major was in public art and Latin American and Latino studies. I have been a visual artist and muralist, I would say actively, probably since 2012, but I've always been, um, I've always been a visual artist, like drawing, painting small scale. My largest work so far has been the mural at Beach Flats Park. It is a 190 foot long mural that is, goes along the length of the park. And it's um, a mural that kind of like highlights uh, and celebrates the culture of the community that lived there, oh, yeah. highlighting yeah. some history, uh, like local history, indigenous history. I'm also a community worker, a community organizer. I'm really committed to uplifting community efforts towards moving towards social justice and liberation for all peoples. I work for a nonprofit here in town um, that allows me to connect with young people. And I mentioned that I'm a community organizer because I feel like that plays a big role in my art and my art plays a big role in my community organizing. So I consider myself to be a community-based artist. The theme is really inspiring to me. The thought, the, the whole concept of community healing or community-based healing is something that I'm always curious about anyway. So when I was approached to be part of this exhibit, I was really excited because it feels like a natural culmination or um, feels like a, a natural combination of my work as community Organizer, also someone who is very interested in traditional healing modalities, particularly that come from um, Mexico and Central America. And then um, my role as artist, as visual artist. So what I was able to do with this project um, when I was invited to do a mural on community healing, it was a little overwhelming, um, but I, just remembered, well, it's about the people. And so I selected six figures um, who I have been had the privilege to meet throughout the community, who I consider to bring healing in some way to the community, are embodying or practicing a version of healing that doesn't often get portrayed in dominant narratives or dominant media about like what healing looks like it's, um, you know, and I wanted the figures to represent experiences and identities that don't often get invited to the table when policy is being drawn up or when conversations around health and safety are being considered. Um, these stories often aren't told. So I wanted to make sure that the people I portray get their stories told. So I've invited each of them to um, share with me a recording of themselves answering questions along the lines of, you know, what does community healing look like for you? What does healing look like for you? What is your medicine? What do you consider to be medicine? And so that's why each of them are portrayed with an item or object that um, represents their healing in some way. Communities, collective care, when we were thinking about the, the title for the piece, I felt like, the, the topic of community healing felt so broad um, that I wanted to give a little bit of language to one iteration of what community healing might look like, um, or basically like trying to think of another way to say community healing. And so one, yeah, possible iteration of that is that it's collective care work. So it's um, collective in that it takes, you know, no, no one of us can do our healing work in isolation. It does take um, process and reflection in, in community, right? Like it's very much built into, um, or like a lot of these systems of things that tend to bring us healing do um, thrive when done around others who are in that similar journey. And then the collective care part um, 
really, I think, speaks to my interest in, in mutual aid work, which we're seeing a lot of right now, considering, you know, the recent fires and um, a lot of the injustices that have been highlighted by the pandemic. We're seeing a lot of mutual aid networks really shining in these moments when our um, kind of established uh, medical s systems are leaving so many people out. Um, so I really wanted this to be a testament to the power of mutual aid and grassroots networks, um, trust networks. And something that I'm gonna be painting in the bottom, in the soil, is gonna be mycelium. So mycelium is this like intelligent life force that forms networks under the soil. It is the nervous system of the soil. It's like connecting the pulse of all the other living organisms that are living in the, um, in the soil and above the soil. So I wanted to uh, bring a sense of that, that way that like mycelium networks function and bring yeah, are just like like underground networks of intelligences that sustain the ecosystem. I want to highlight that and like allow that to um, reflect the kinds of care networks that we are practicing in our community here in Santa Cruz and beyond. And when you think of like the nervous system, I also I'm thinking of the respiratory system. So the little cilia of our lungs looks very much like the like little branch networks of the nervous system and that's what these mycelium networks look like it's also related to why the purple flowers as the edge so those are bougainvillea flowers bougainvillea flowers in traditional um, mexican herbalism helps with respiratory issues which I feel like is particularly relevant right now considering the pandemic, but also the fires. And um, so on a physiological level, the bougainvillea helps relieve um, any respiratory issues. But on an energetic level, bougainvillea, the deep purple bougainvillea, helps um, relieve grief. And I wanted the people that I portray um, to be held in that, but also for the viewer to feel like they are in like a large grove of, of bougainvillea. And that's where my personal um, statement as an artist comes in of what heals me. Uh, I think working with plant medicine, working with color, and then putting myself into um, these environments where my healing can be, uh, or I can be surrounded by things that bring me a sense of healing, a sense of um, care. Hello, my name is Sam Cunningham. I would like to thank you very much for stopping to see the exhibit and for listening to what I had to say. Before I tell you a little bit about myself, I would like to acknowledge that we are all born into situations and circumstances that we have no control whatsoever over. Still and yet, these circumstances and situations have huge impacts on our lives. Not only how we view the world, but where do I fit in in this world? Some of the situations and circumstances that I was born into, one, is that I'm from a biracial relationship. My mother is Mexican and my father was black. Because of this, I never really fit in. I didn't know if I was Mexican. I didn't know if I was black. I felt like I didn't fit in with either side. On top of that, I would be bullied because I was biracial. I would be bullied by the Mexican kids because my skin was too dark and my hair was too coarse. I would get bullied by the black kids because my skin was too light and my hair was too straight. 
Not only would I get this bullying from the kids at school and in the neighborhood, I would also be bullied by my family members. When I went to my black side of my family, I was called every derogatory name that you could call a little Mexican boy. When I went to my Mexican side of my family, I would be called every derogatory name that you could call a little black boy. Because of this, I developed a lot of anger and a lot of resentment towards my family. I never felt like I belonged or I was part of, a, of my biological family. Another situation that I was born into is that my father was an alcoholic who was abusive towards my mother and myself. I saw my mother beat by my father as far back as I could remember. And I remember just standing there screaming and feeling so helpless and so hopeless watching my father beat my mother. And parts of me looking at this man and hating him, but parts of me also loving this man. I didn't want to love him. I wanted to completely hate him, but I couldn't. Because of these situations and circumstances that I was born into, that I had no decision making in, I would spend the first 40 years of my life filled with so much anger, so much hurt, and so many resentments towards my father, towards my family, and even towards my community, that 22 year, at 22 years of age, I participated in the brutal murder of a rival gang member. Twenty-two years into a life sentence, and four consecutive governors telling me that I would die in prison. I sat in the prison cell, feeling helpless and hopeless. That's when I met Nane Alejandres and Barrios Sonidos, and I was given medicine. Medicine that fed my soul and breathed life into my spirit. I no longer felt helpless or hopeless. I felt strong and alive. That's when I decided that even if I never left prison as a free man again, I would start sharing the healing medicine of hope, of peace, and of love that Nane and Barrios Unidos was bringing to us in prison. I had a prison full of young men right there with me who were doing a year, some were doing three years, five years, but they were all going home. So I decided to give all this hope, all of this medicine that Nane and Barrios was bringing to me, to these young men that was going home. Something that I didn't realize then, but I would later realize after reading a quote by the great man of peace, Mahatma Gandhi. He once said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. As I fed medicine to these young men, what I realized is that I was also feeding medicine to myself. As I said earlier, we have all been born in the situations and circumstances that we had no decision making in whatsoever. Still and yet, our lives have been profoundly affected by them. Some of us dealt with them in better ways than others. For me, I was so overwhelmed with so much hurt and pain that I made a lot of terrible decisions. And because of them decisions, I went into a place that I never want to see any other young person. And that's why I do what I do. Once again, thank you very much for coming to visit the exhibit. And I hope you enjoyed it.
God bless you. Manahuidibua. My name is Uli Crowbear. Uh, that's the name that my my mother, my spirit mother, had given to me. Um, what's healing for me is seeing everything that I have overcome. Right, healing is understanding that I am more than what I was born into. Um, that's a bit broad, but I guess what I'm saying is that every person and every being has a different story, a completely different path, a different journey that is it's amazing and there are all the emotions that go along with that. So healing for me is an ongoing process. Um, seeing myself as sacred, right? Before I didn't understand, I didn't understand who I was. I didn't, I didn't know the, the, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know my roots, my culture, uh, you know, being Native American, indigenous peoples, you know, our roots go deeper than words could even say. Each person, um, pigment of skin, you know, color is just a color. Pigment is part of our, our identity and it's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, so seeing myself as sacred, you know, um, being accountable, holding myself accountable for the pain and the hurt that comes and goes with life, but learning lessons, medicine, oh, there's so many different layers to what medicine means to me or how I feel and see things that make me happy. Um, my medicine is my family. That's a big one for me. Um, you know, without, without roots, without family, um, my chosen family, without having that support and that stability, I wouldn't be as grounded as I am today. Um, yeah. Right on. Um, and can you speak a little bit to the drum, like how that connects? Yeah. Definitely. So yeah, the drum is, uh, one of, you know, is, it's definitely a part of what, what makes, makes me happy and makes, you know, it makes vibrations and makes people feel so my drum is my medicine because I'm able to um, sing songs and remember, you know, the feelings that come with, you know, singing traditional songs or language, language, um, it resonates far. I believe community healing can look like can look like humanity, our community genuinely reaching out to one another. Um, sure, due to coronavirus, we can only do so much though, you know, still spreading as much positivity as you can, whether that be, you know, care packages or running in your car and dropping things on doorsteps, you know, supply runs, 
anything that anybody can tribute is is so good that's medicine you know because without each other without each other's support whatever that looks like you know as much as you can do there's no limit you know there's no proper way to to do you know contribute to the community anything is valid just like we all are valid so i think what community you know healing looks like is accepting that we are all valid and understand that you know sometimes we disagree with one another that's totally totally cool you know we can disagree all damn day and still I'll choose every day to keep standing up and still helping in, you know, in figuring out a way to finish the, the task at hand. And I'm not scared to learn a different way or to still keep going. It's okay to not, to not know or, to figure out in a team way. Um, I like being a team member completely. And that could be a really hard thing because there's so many leaders. We are all leaders. And my idea is not the best idea. And I think understanding that as a leader, Sometimes when your idea isn't like it, that's totally cool because you have other people that have great ideas. And as long as we can go right behind each other and support each other on what we need to do to make movement, make change, to see the future in different light, despite all the crap that's going on, because it's pretty shitty right now. It is so damn shitty right now. And it's also really beautiful. Why? Because we have people, community members that can help. We have contractors. we got people that can build foundations. We have uh, farm worker friends, you know, who actually grow and harvest the food. We've got, uh, you know, people who are in mental health fields and they're helping with people's you know with trauma <laughs> they're, they're helping with people's trauma every single individual on this planet in this world in this life in our community of santa cruz county and beyond in these local areas we each have a role to play and that's community medicine right there is seeing each other and with my eyes, I see, and I cannot unsee the beauty that is in front of me. I think we're doing a great job. And as long as we keep on keeping on the good work, giving each other praise, seeing each other, we're going to be okay in this life. We're going to be, we're going to be really good. And, you know, the, the earth is going to do what the earth is going to do. And it's up to us to do what we have to do to live in harmony with this world. ¿De dónde, de dónde es usted? Yo soy de Oaxaca, pero en mi pueblo se llama San Martín Peras. Para mí, salud es para cuidar bien nosotros, a mi niño. Y... Pues comer algo de pues, verdura, uh -huh. pues, pues eso. Pues, este, como dijeron que pues hay muchas enfermedades ahorita, pues a, uh -huh. eh, le digo a mis hijos que pues no salgan. Pues, uh -huh. A veces yo le digo que se quede en la casa y yo voy en la tienda o así que traigo su, la que te gusta. Uh -huh. Ellos también ya sabes cómo son estos enfermedades que hay. Como, pues este, a mí, pues allá en el trabajo no, no quiere que sentamos juntos. 
lavamos la mano con jabón por unos 20 segundos uh -huh. y lavarlo bien con jabón uh -huh. y echar más alcohol hacen allá en el allá en el trabajo eh, le echan spray de la silla uh -huh. todo desinfectante sí, uh -huh, sí. sí. Y, y allá en la casa yo tengo jabón y ya con eso lo lava y, 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 luego lo, lo que le dan a ustedes y le digo que no si lo ocupan pues aquí están y ya pues deja todo para mí yo voy voy, voy a agarrar comida voy a pues no le falta nada le dejo, no. y si usa las la pomada que ah, sí, sí, eso lo he hecho en la, en la espalda porque duele uh -huh. mucho y su y, cadera y, uh, ajá, sí. uh -huh. y con eso sí ayuda un poco uh -huh. porque a veces se me olvida ponerlo y si sí duele uh -huh. pero eso sí sí ayuda uh -huh. está buena uh -huh. también porque a veces yo lo hago a, a de la mañana uh -huh. ¿Cuál es pero tipo con de este té? calor uh -huh. ah, sí, con uh -huh. el Uh, pues me gusta mucho de la manzanilla, uh -huh. huele bonito y sí, sí, pasado. Sí, ajá. Uh -huh. Hi, my name is Misha Cardenas. I am an artist and activist and theorist and assistant professor of critical race and ethnic studies and digital arts and new media at UC Santa Cruz. I want to thank Irene and Lama so much for including me in this beautiful project about community healing. I'm so honored and inspired to be part of the project. How do you envision healing? What supports your healing? Time, space, witness, and water. Somatic practices that connect me to my body and writing practices like poetry allow me to access memories and process them. These are all elements of healing for me, essential elements, essential things that support my healing. What are you healing from? Honestly, more than anything, I'm healing from heartbreak. But also, so many things. Abuse, childhood abuse, police and prisons, putting my dad in prison for years when I was a kid, transphobia, homophobia, transphobic violence that I've experienced more than once, lost relationships, lost places I loved, lost family members and friends and ancestors, What is medicine for you? Music, dance, and poetry are main forms of medicine for me. Lately, in quarantine, I've been learning to make music and playing my guitar, bass, and cello bring me so much soothing. Let's me be in the moment. In a moment that's outside of neoliberal capitalist social media time, moments of joy of playing songs I've loved since I was a kid, like Mazzy Star and Portishead and The Cure and Joy Division. Moments of touching something real beyond screens and devices designed to be addictive. Dance is another medicine for me, somatic practice, connecting to music, embodying it. It's an ancient medicine, embodying the goddess, feeling one with something bigger than myself. What does community healing look like to me? We cannot heal alone. I think that community healing is the only kind of healing. We need someone to witness us, to hold space for us, to mirror and reflect our pain in order to process those feelings. And move on. I mean, if you can even move on, but in order to process our feelings, I think that reflection and witness is essential. 
But also community healing, I think, happens through dialogue, through organizing and activism, and through long, long conversations over years that look like a larger scale of the everyday act of making amends or making an apology. And it starts with acknowledging the harm that's been done. I mean, in this city, in this country, we would need to acknowledge the colonization, the taking of this land from the Awaswas and the Amamutsun Ohlone people, the anti-Black racism in the city, the different forms of homophobia, transphobia, and classism and misogyny that happen every day in the city and in this country, the different forms of colonial, neoliberal capitalism that have led to a degraded environment in which wildfires can be so destructive and powerful. I don't see how we can even talk about healing while so much harm is still being done to black people. We need to abolish prisons. We need to defund the police. We can't heal while black people are being murdered every day, while trans women are being murdered every day. And after the harm has been acknowledged, the thing to do is to ask the person or people who have been harmed what can be done to make amends? What can be done to make things better? We can learn from transformative justice processes and in this case we need to talk to indigenous people, black people, trans people, women, disabled people, poor people about how to rectify the all the harm that's been done. Thank you. My name is Luis Carrillo. How do I envision healing? I envision healing by being spiritually connected to Mother Earth, being spiritually connected to um, your own beliefs, as in, you know, for myself, growing up at a Catholic household. I was always a firm believer of La Virgen de Guadalupe. I also participate in Native American sweating ceremonies, which keeps me grounded and keeps me focused. What does community healing look like to me? Well, community healing to me is being able to help others that have been going through the same struggles as myself, you know, by my own experience, you know, being able to be there for it, whether it's a youth, whether it's somebody that I know, whether it is family, you know, just being able to help and also let them know that they're not alone. Before you go on to the next recording, just want to leave you with a quote from Tupac. For every dark night, there's a brighter day. Take care. Okay. My name is Luna, and I'm a hoodoo healer. I envision healing as acknowledging what we have been through, acknowledging who we were before the trauma of of colonization, and bringing ourselves to a place of wholeness and being able to reimagine what thriving looks like within the context of the trauma we've experienced. Uh, My medicine is communing with my ancestors. My medicine is feeling uh, their guidance in the medicines and plants that I use and access. And my medicine is when I look those things up and I know that my ancestors' voices were right the first time. Community healing looks like different people from different places being able to see the humanity in all the multiplicities that we are and working with each other to ensure that we all enjoy the beauty of Earth without exploiting the Earth or each other. Um, I chose the conch shell because my ancestors' legacy is always connected to the sea and the ocean and as a place of trauma. And I want to also speak about the times in which we were free and seafaring and that we were the ones who made the maps for the oceans. Um, And that the ocean is not just a place of sadness and loss for us, but it is a place of freedom and exploration.
I chose the fan because it reminds me of all my elders and aunties in church on Sundays who fan themselves. And it reminds me of the ways in which we held on to our sacred spiritual practices, even under the guise of Christianity and colonialism. And I chose the candle because light attracts spirit and it's spirit that guides my healing work. I think I just grew up with um, strong values um, of, you know, human rights, justice, a sense of, um, you know, equal opportunity for all people. My father is a civil rights attorney who worked with the district of um, LA Unified School District. And yeah, since I was a kid, the kinds of conversations that we were able to have in my family home very much allowed me to to develop an awareness that there was not um, equality and and just, you know, looking at the dynamics of the neighborhood and where I lived and the difference of like other parts of uh, the community. And and then coming to UC Santa Cruz, developing more of a critical awareness and and lens, um, definitely through my LALS program, um, traveling, traveled to Mexico a bunch and studied like um, uh, popular movements led by teachers, led by, um, you know, people who are just fighting for basic things, right? Um, And then in the last, I want to say, yeah, the last 10 years I've been um, pretty plugged into organizing efforts here in the county, really Digging, digging deep into the many ways that um, the the racism and the oppression is hidden, but in plain sight <laughs> here in Santa Cruz. So I was very inspired and informed by the muralism tradition from Mexico, but also um, like the Chicano movement in the seventies in LA, always seeing you know, the the Great Wall um, by Judy Baca, um, going down to San Diego and seeing all the murals in Barrio Logan, um, and just understanding that the murals were the people's museum, right? People who were historically um, barred access from institutions like museums, like art galleries, have to create those spaces um, where they can on their in their own neighborhoods, in the streets, particularly the streets and structures that have tried to displace them, which is why places like Radio Logan are so cool because they built a freeway overpass directly in the neighborhood and the neighborhood reclaimed those spaces by painting on the freeway overpass. I gravitate towards muralism because of its ability to build community to help form from, um, relationships and to um, allow the community to define and portray for themselves what their, what their history is, what their legacy is, and their visions for the future. Kind of like it gives them an opportunity to define themselves. And I love to be, I like to facilitate that as like coming from an approach of, um, yeah, holding space for like for the community to define itself. I'm not going in there and imposing my own ideas a little bit, but it's in collaboration. Some of them I, I had just met recently, but all of them, like I met Uli for, I was doing a program with them for four years. They're in the youth program that I work for. And just super bright spirit. Rosalina, a so farm worker I just met doing the Campus Unex Womb Care Project, which is tied to the exhibit. And that is a project where um, myself and a couple of friends are birth workers and we're putting together womb care kits for farm workers in Watsonville every month. We put together about 130 um, bags that have items such as um, pads, soap, um, uh, womb care salve, like uh, made out of um, herbal tinctures and things like that. Well, yeah, it's like herbal salve, tinctures, teas, and a bunch of other like essential care items. Money is great because we actually put oh. cash in their bags. Yes, if people want to donate money, we have a Venmo. 
Um, best way to look that up is by going to our Instagram, just at Campesinas Womb Care. What made me want to stay? Used to come up this way with my family, uh, camping and stuff like that when I was young. And so I always loved this part of the world. And so for sure, the geography. <laughs> really well really was about the community organizing like or spaces that I was able to be in I lived in a um really cool co-op that was made up of like activists teachers artists like and they're all pretty much like around the same age most of us POC most of us doing work in the community or making music or making art we would hold these like monthly art um markets in the house and, and music shows and things like that and there used to be this really cool mural on the wall on the front of the building I think it was like one of the last co-ops in Santa Cruz because that there used to be a really rich history of co-ops and and then I started working for two organizations a resource center for nonviolence and Barrios Unidos and I was doing work in the kids club down in the beach flats I was putting on um, events like Youth Day, and we collaborated with NAACP. And then I was also um, working in the high school at Santa Cruz High. And then eventually I worked in the juvenile hall up in Felton. Um, I've been a teaching artist, so just been all over. Um, and then I started working with Food What. And yeah, I've just been really fortunate to have had work and work that aligns with my values. and yeah, I can't seem to leave. Then I get awesome opportunities to be, you know, part of like this institution and other um, projects going on in the community. I think I'm looking forward to being part of a timely and much needed conversation around what it looks like to um, create more points of access for community, particularly underserved and marginalized communities such as, you know, the. Latino community, the, the folks who live in the flats, pockets of um, families in Santa Cruz that don't often get to, not that they don't get to, I think it's, it's just a matter of like, like extending the invitation and making it really accessible for, for them to enjoy the things, the kinds of things that are happening here at the museum. Um, I also am excited to speak on behalf, at, like I am excited to share the perspective of an artist and an artist that's a woman <laughs> an artist that's a woman of color um and I would just want to advocate on behalf of of artists especially emerging artists to um be taken seriously and be paid our worth um when it comes to these times that we're living in I feel like artists and cultural workers are essential they're critical as we do a lot of this culture shifting work and considering that the importance of artists we also need to make it possible for them to be able to live and thrive in um in one of the most expensive uh, cities in the world here so definitely want to just speak to um the importance of valuing the arts and community work this exhibit will be up outdoors and anyone can check it out um it will be outdoors in the secret garden part of the exhibit is not just the mural it's um programming as well so there will be uh ways to interact and engage with the exhibit that actually lends itself to doing collective care work in the community